This is a another part of a haunting in Virginia. I was sitting here thinking about some more things that happened. I was supposed to make these videos sooner, but lost track of time. Speaking of which, I'd better keep an eye on the time. I've only got X amount of minutes. Okay. Uh, there was a at one time also in that house. There was uh, I was sitting in the living room downstairs. The kids had already gone to bed, and I heard somebody come down from upstairs. My uh, husband at the time and his mother. His mother was in from. New York visiting for a couple of weeks and was staying with us and so uh, they was upstairs watching TV the kids had gone to bed and I was sitting in the living room by myself and I heard footsteps coming down the steps and uh, coming through the hallway where they went opposite of the living room where I was at I could hear it go down to the hallway uh, come up through the kitchen and I'm sitting there you know crocheting and so uh I hear it come up behind me, and I can actually see a shadow, a figure of a person, come in the doorway this way. I'm doing like this. I'm looking over my shoulders. And they come across this way, walk over behind me, and I see it stop right here. And so I turn around and say, I've got you. And when I did that, there was this loud scream, and it was a woman's scream, and it was just so loud. And it was, uh, I heard my uh, husband and my mother-in-law come running from upstairs. And they come running down the steps and come into the room and, and he's hollering, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said, what do you mean, what's wrong? He said, uh, <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hope I'm not getting a swan flu. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, I heard you scream and I, I had to convince him that was not me. So he even went so far as to go, it was late that night, he even went so far as to go get a flashlight and go outside around the woods looking for a screaming woman. Uh, another time there was, uh, I'm looking at my crib notes here. Uh, I was in the basement. I was doing laundry in the basement. And I was home by myself that day. And I'm putting the clothes into the washer. And, and I was thinking maybe somebody had come home. Because I heard somebody coming down the basement steps. And it sounded like somebody was trying to tiptoe down the basement steps and I was gonna wait you know till they got up behind me and this was even after the screaming lady incident and I, I, that house never scared me I, I always felt like I wasn't alone in that house so anyway they come down the steps and walk up behind me and did like a tap me on the shoulder on the back of my shoulder I guess maybe thinking I was gonna scream or something that's what I thought and when they tapped me I turned around and did like that to reach out and grab them, you know, or, or to do something. I turned around and, and there was nobody there. Nobody. And that's one time it touched me, tapped me on the shoulder. I had a... I was in the bathroom one day. And I was getting ready to go out to the bathroom door and it came open a little bit. And then I looked at it, and I was thinking maybe it was one of the kids, but I could hear them out in the yard, you know, so I'm looking at the door, and then it closed. And so I go over, and I look out, you know, out the window. I see the kids way down here in the yard playing, and I thought, well, I turn around and look back at the bathroom door, and it, it was like it was moving a little bit. And so I just leaned up against the sink and, you know, crossed my arms. And I'm looking at the door, and what I did, I, did, I didn't say this out loud, but I was looking at the door and mentally saying to myself, whoever is at that door, I want you to open the door halfway and close it back hard. So, I'm just standing there with my arms crossed looking at the door. And I guess it must have been two or three minutes that I stood there just staring and nothing happened, so... I thought, well, ain't nothing gonna happen, you know. So, I stopped leaning against the sink and I started towards the door. And when I started towards the door, the door started opening. And it came open slow, like, you know, in my mind's eye that I told it to. Came open slow halfway, and bam, slammed shut. 
That's one time I left that house. Yep, I had to go then. I run. <laughs> that was kind of scary. I was out of the room one day. Uh, my mother-in-law, this was right after uh, me and my husband had first got mar married. She had bought me uh, a kerosene lamp with a real pretty big dome on it that said home sweet home and I didn't keep kerosene in it but I kept colored water in it you know to match the decor of the room and uh, I had left the room and my kids were little and they was off in the living room at the other end of the house and I heard something like dragging like something like dragging across the floor or across the counter and the kids uh, started screaming and it's like I was in slow motion, you know, because we were there by ourselves. And I take off down the hallway, and I heard glass shattering, just glass just shattered. And I was looking this way, and I could see my kids sitting over here on the couch. They were little, and they were in the corner of the couch, and Stephanie was hugging Joey. And they were sitting there screaming, and she was just hugging him. And my that lamp had broke. But the thing of it was, the lamp was on this side of the counter, and moved all the way down the bar, made a curve, went that way, and crashed into the wall. And that dome broke into a million pieces. There was glass all over the dining room, all over the living room. So I thought, well, and they was describing how they saw it moving. And it just, they said it moved slow and moved fast, went around the curve and hit the wall. So I went and I bought a new dome for that lamp. Let me check my time. I bought a new dome for the lamp and bought it home and put it on because it didn't break the base of the lamp. And I put that new dome on there and that dome broke too. I couldn't keep a dome on that lamp. I don't know what it was about that lamp. But we had a we had a clock that I had hanging on the wall. And it was a, a pendulum clock, but it was a cat. And um, the tail would swing and it had the chains hanging from it, you know, and it was like a cuckoo clock, but it was in the shape of a cat. And one night that cat just slid down the wall and fell apart. And so Joy picked it up and we laughed about it, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. The nail could have slipped or whatever we thought. Joy picked the cat up, put the clock back together and hung it back up. And, you know, he tugged on it. Yeah, it was up there sturdy. We couldn't figure out why it fell. And then, uh, we was talking about it. We was sitting there talking about it. And he said something about it. I hate that clock. And it fell apart and slid down the wall again. So he picked it up and put it back together and hung it back up on the wall. And every time he would look at that clock and said, I hate that clock. It would just fall apart and slide off the wall. That was a little weird. And then uh, I had a... Stephanie was upstairs one day. She used to like to go upstairs and dance and stuff when she got a little bit older. And she was up there with her music blasting, you know, that way it didn't bother me downstairs. And so she was up there with her music blasting. And then I heard her screaming. I mean, just blood curling screams. She was screaming. And so I took off and Joey was behind me. We was gonna go upstairs and see what was going on. And I, I was running so fast to where my hands was on in front of me going up the steps. I was going up steps on all four, hollering at her. And when we get up there, she's standing down at the other end of the hall. And it's like she's just frozen. She's just standing there screaming. And, and she's just frozen in fear. And she said that she saw a figure outside the window at the end of the hall. Well, it was like three stories up at that point from the back part of the driveway. You know, the basement the main level in the upstairs and there was no way you could get up there you know to that window and it was dark outside and she thought it was her reflection while she was standing there looking down the hall at first she thought it was her reflection and she said she kept noticing it and she kept looking down the hallway and looking at it and finally she said she started dancing around like that you know and, and the reflection was standing still that's when she knew it wasn't her and um that scared her pretty bad. So, um, she never did go back upstairs after that. She wouldn't do it after that, but anyway.
that's all the stories I got for right now because I'm running out of time and I got some things to do. So uh, I got tons more, tons more, and I'll be back on here and, and, and share some more of those with you. So until next time, bye bye.